Hey, it's Chip Collins, Collins Group Realty, and today we're going to bring you up to speed on the data through the middle part of 2022 and also talk about a specific market metric that's going to pretty much define what you can expect in the late summer and fall market. So let's get after it. Okay, here we are with an update. Basically, through the middle part of 2022, I'm joined with Chris Sanders, who's our strategic advisor here at Collins Group Realty. And Chris, it continues to be an evolving market. And, and when we look at the data through June, basically looking at some, some data that's, um, it may seem discouraging a little bit at the outset. You look at the number of new listings that have come on the market is down by 8%. The number of new pending sales is down 26%. The number of closed sales through June of this year is down 16%. So basically, it's um, we've come off of this high market, and and now we're in a little bit more of a stabilizing market, a market that seems to be regressing just a little bit. And you know, the, the thing that I think people want to figure out is, okay, everybody has different stories about how the market's going. How do we define, like how do you define when you study the market, what the market is? Like what's that one metric that you can look at and say statistically, this is the kind of market that we're in. Well, I would say that is definitely going to be the monthly housing supply. And the, and the monthly housing supply is really what defines, are we in a buyer's market? Are we in a seller's market? Are we in a stable market? I mean, Chip, markets are always changing. So we're always transitioning from a buyer's market to a seller's market through a stable market or vice versa. Right. And so is there middle ground, by the way? So you got seller's market and we were just in, okay, we all know we were just in a crazy seller's market and maybe we're still there, you'll tell us. And, and we know that basically, gosh, you go back 10 years ago and we were in a buyer's market, right? There was a ton right. of inventory and not as much demand, et cetera. What, what's in the middle? Well, that's a balanced market, okay? A, a, a marketplace that's in equilibrium, so to speak. That's where you have, you have sufficient demand to handle the inventory that's being introduced to the market every day. Okay, so then statistically, you gotta compare the what the number of transactions against the inventory. How do you do that? That's and, right. And how do you define what's the breaking point between this, a buyer's market, a balanced market, and a seller's market? Basically, this monthly housing supply, we can look at it in this way. Right now, the monthly housing supply is 1.6 months here in our local markets. Now that is up a little bit from one month, just, <clears throat> just this time last year. Anything under three months is a, is a seller's market, okay. okay? So we are still in a seller's market, but we're in a softening seller's market because that monthly housing supply, still low, is going up. Once we get into three to six month supply of inventory. That's our balanced market. That's where a market is in equilibrium. That's what we were talking about the other day about a normalizing market. We mm -hmm. see that in our in our headlights. We see a normalizing market on the way. So that's what happens. <clears throat> if you look at a buyer's market, that's when the monthly housing supply is over six months. And it can get to it can get extreme. I mean Chip, you remember, gosh, it wasn't three or four years ago when some markets had a 12 month supply of inventory or a 15 month supply of inventory. Inventory was just kind of sitting there and buyers could kind of go picking around and shopping and sellers were having to win the beauty war and the pricing competition. Yeah, absolutely. And the thing is, you know, we talk about monthly housing supply and in the hot, hot market last year, my goodness, we were talking about a weeks or days, or in some cases we joked even like an hourly month uh, or hourly supply of inventory. Yes. And then you go back to when it was much stronger as a buyer's market. There were some segments of the market. I remember we were talking about years supply. Of oh, inventory. definitely. We we're talking about upwards of two years supply of inventory. So it seems like this data point, which you can arrive at, you do a specific study and you're comparing the consumption rate against the actual inventory, and it's a static moment in time thing, right? But, but as you study it, it seems like if I'm a seller, that helps me define what kind of market I'm trying to sell in. And if I'm a buyer, it helps define what kind of market I'm trying to buy in, right? So it's useful for both sides. Yes, and not understanding the monthly housing supply or the trending of where the monthly housing supply looks to be going is really uh, not smart. It's like it's like being blindfolded, spun around, and trying to throw a dart. You have to know where where you're headed, 
in the pace at which you're headed. In fact, I mean, that's what appraisals, if you look at your appraisal, if, I don't know who's gotten an appraisal recently, but that's a real important metric that appraisers are putting in their appraisal reports. What is the monthly housing supply? And how is it trending? What was it like the last 30 days? What was it like the last six months? What was it like at the beginning of, of the start of the year? Lenders are looking at that because that is the way they can statistically judge which way the market's going and how fast it's going in that direction. Right, and so a buyer needs to know that in terms of their offer strategy, like how confident can they be? And, and, and a seller needs to know it basically, like what's your competition? And so mm -hmm. like when we're talking with, with sellers, What's the, what's the strategy discussion look like right now? Like what's a, you know, I know what it was last year, like almost sure. was like how much money do you want to make, right? But, but now as there's more inventory, what's the strategy looking like now? You have to be competitive, obviously, right now, but you also have to, you have to position your uh, listing in a compelling manner. It, it has to, buyers have to go, okay, that, that looks like something that, that's, that's positioned right. You can't just throw a price way up there and just say, well, we'll just expect an offer. Yeah. That won't happen. Of course, right. And so, so as you do that, a seller needs to be mindful of that. And compelling would, would suggest that you still want, you, maybe you're not just trying to get that one buyer that's going to pay that one price and on a hope and a prayer. Compelling is more about positioning it so that it's compelling to multiple people. More, more buyers coming to the table on a, on a specific listing is going to generate the maximum price that that listing can realistically command. Yeah. One buyer coming to that listing, the chances of that happening are, are pretty limited. But um, so that, that's what you wanna, you wanna position a listing. The, the listings that we see get absorbed in this market right now are the ones that are positioned in a compelling manner. And even if they don't sell over list price, they still have enough buyer competition come to the table where the terms might be good. Mm -hmm. And the list price, or the sale price to list price ratio, which has been for leading up to now through the June report, has been at or over 100% right. um, on average. Um, we're calculating that continuously and we do expect that to be down below 100% come the July report when the, this month is over. So stay tuned for that. Yeah, yeah, good point. So great great way to study the market, statistically define what the market is, super powerful for buyers, super important for sellers. Mm -hmm. And this is data that can be derived at, at a moment's notice in that snapshot of time. And as you said, you can be focusing on over time. So you know, if, if you've got an interest in the monthly housing supply statistic in a specific neighborhood or area of the marketplace, that's a great way to understand what you're getting into, whether you're a buyer or a seller. It's something that we can create for them. All you got to do is give us a call, shoot us an email, and, and get knowledgeable about this marketplace as it's shifting and evolving like it always does. And as always, we're really glad to be here to help. Appreciate the conversation about it, Chris. And, um, and we'll talk to you all soon.